can't believe he did that. I thought, are you out of your mind? Like, have you seen the news about Ovenia in the 91 or 97? It's like, you don't know if you're getting kidnapped. You don't know anyone there. Why are you going there? And he's like, I really have a good feeling about this, this girl and I want to see her in person. Yeah, like I guess like most of the people they come here in different ways um, yeah. mine was a little bit different than the others <laughs> I think I mentioned it yes, <laughs> yes. so the tele soap opera story of mine um, so I'm guessing you guys are all familiar with the 30, 60, 90 day fiance show yeah. so kind of like my story was like that like um, I was in Albania I'm just thinking like I'm graduating and this was my future and next thing I know I met someone online and I just thought we were friends and we're just like talking and talking. Um, he was American. Um, he had some Albanian friends. So I guess like we had that connection. Like he already yeah. knew a little bit about the culture. And we just like, you know, like we're talking and then one thing led to another. I was talking on Skype at 11 o'clock in Albania. And like not even my door because I didn't have Wi-Fi. Um, we're not rich. <laughs> but I would go to a, a internet cafe, they call it. And this is like a place that you go and you can use internet, like paid yeah. per hour. And I'll go there at 11 to like 12 or 1 o'clock at night because here was 5 p.m. And that's where the guy was finishing his work. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess like one thing led to another. But I never thought that I would ever fall in love or have a distance relationship and um, my current husband surprise he actually flew to Albania and I remember his dad he told me later that I can't believe he did that I thought are you out of your mind like have you seen the news about Albania in the 91 or 97 it's like you don't know if you're getting kidnapped you don't know anyone there why are you going there and he's like I really have a good feeling about this this girl and I want to see her in person but at the time, he didn't tell me that he was coming to, like for me, he said that he made this story like, oh, my company is sending me for potential investment in Albania. And I was basically translating him, like I was mm. doing a job. But I was not getting paid really good. Because <laughs> like we were not really doing a lot of work, we were more like hanging out. And I kind of like slowly realized, I'm like, okay, he came for me. But I just like, I was so like, you know, as Albanians, we have, um, we're very attached to people. We show so much love, yeah. but then when it comes to, love relationship we have this barrier because we don't want to get hurt uh yeah. things have happened in the past and uh i guess like i had this intuition i'm like this is the guy of my dreams like it wasn't about like the the guy the the white horse that you see in the dream of the prince but more about like i can see him being the dad of my kids one day i can yeah. see him being my future husband and like building something together but i never thought that would be anything other than just what it was um and he actually came again in a few months and proposed me in front of my parents, which I had to translate at the same time. So, <laughs> and, you know, he didn't have a ring because it was so spontaneous that I'm like, you know, you know I didn't marry you for the ring. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was basically the reason I came here. And people think maybe I had it easier. Uh, the only thing that I had it easier is that I had somebody, I didn't came alone. I had somebody that already had a full-time job, but we all had to struggle as everybody else. Uh, yeah. I right away went to school here. Um, I was doing internships and working volunteer part-time because all the people in my school, they were not even allowed to drink yet. They were not even 21. And my peers already had started working. Here I am reliving and starting my life from scratch. So that was, I guess, like another journey that led me to be now because by me going to school, it's not that I learned so much about marketing that I can apply today in my business, to be honest, because right. I feel books are a little bit outdated, especially with the social media marketing part. Yeah. But it led me to be part of different communities and organizations. So I didn't feel a stranger because everybody, when they come to you, has have a culture shock. Yeah. Unfortunately. And because of that, you feel a stranger. And then you stay here, you live here for many years, and then you go back home to Albania, you feel a stranger there. Because you haven't been there, you haven't been um, home. So we feel like this type of people that we don't have a home, whether here or there. But now I think I'm the the state that I feel this is my home. And when I go to Albania, like, yeah, Albania has a special place in my heart. But I feel like I'm the tourist when I go there. <laughs> there's always changes and constructions and buildings and new things develop in Albania that I honestly feel like a tourist in my own country, my home country in a way. That's so 
awesome. Oh my, I love that story. That's how you met your husband because that's like 30, 30, 90 day fiance. 30, 60, 90 it was days. scary. Yeah, like it was scary leaving everything behind, and you know I wasn't rich, uh, so it's not that I came here. My husband wasn't rich, so I didn't came here like, oh my god, I'll have this perfect life. But it was scary because I'm like, what if he maybe has another family and he didn't tell me about it? I mean, I, I couldn't see. I didn't know anybody here. Or what if like we don't get along? And I remember my parents at the time, they sneak like a thousand dollars on me, and they're like, in case it doesn't work out, take the next flight. <laughs> And I'm like, I always joke with my husband to this. I'm like, I still have the thousand dollars. He's like, yeah, the oh, tickets are high, honey. Inflation. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, that is hilarious. Well, I mean, it's a deep, you know, leap in faith to trust somebody I like think it's that. Intuition. Yeah, I had too. Intuition. Like there was nothing about him that made me not trust him or feel like he was lying to me. And he never lied to me. So that was the other part too. I love that, and I mean, I love that also too because it's very untraditional for. Her. An Albanian woman to marry outside of. Oh yeah. So I want to <laughs> dive into Albanian culture a little bit for uh, those who aren't familiar, right? Like they've seen us, they know. You know, anyone that I mention Albanian, they're like, oh, you're Albanian. We're they're known afraid. to be crazy. We're <laughs> in known a to good be way. in a good way, right? Yeah, like, because they'll think about automatically like the Albanians in New York oh or the God, movie God, or the movie Taken, taken. <laughs> or like anything like that. And it's like, and and also too, like Albanians now are showing up big time on a world platform. You have Dua Lipa, Rita Ora, B- Rita Ora Bibi Reja, like so Beber, many. Beber Reja, I yeah. should say. Like those are three huge Albanian artists that everyone's like, I didn't know that they were Albanian. And I'm like, you know, there's a creativity about our people. So I want to dive yeah. into the culture a little bit. And since you grew up there too, because for me, I left when I was six months old. Yeah. My parents literally, as soon as I was born, we were here for six months and they fled to Italy. We went to Rome and I lived there till I was five and I would go back and forth a little bit. So I didn't have the privilege of growing up there. Right. So, so kind of like talk a little bit about the culture and like how how we are as we are as people right and like our to explain kind of... why we're crazy <laughs> correct uh, i mean other than the history and what happened i feel you know like for people to understand what they have to understand that we were based in dictatorship for so many years yeah. like we couldn't listen to radio or watch tv or most of us didn't have tv or radio so our culture was just like almost stolen like we would like see what italians are doing we would like try to imitate it what Greek mm-hmm. are wearing and we try to imitate it because of it I feel like a lot of like especially our parents generation they're still a bit with that dictatorship communism mentality because that's right. how they were brainwashed in a way that's what they knew right so it took many years I feel because I compare also my parents from how they were back in the day in Albania they were so old-fashioned very fanatics like don't, girls are not supposed to go out you're not supposed to go party uh, you're not supposed to like have a boyfriend uh, so that's why I couldn't introduce my, at that time, my date, because I'm like, oh no, you don't understand. Like, you have to be serious with me and actually marry me for me to introduce you to my parents. I cannot just introduce you like people introduce you like, hey mom, this is my boyfriend. Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 you you can't. Um, but you know, it's just like everything worked out. So I think like some of uh, the things in the Albanian culture is like we're very community based. Um, it's hard for me to explain it because. There's a lot of like different like Italians are usually family oriented, um, but literally like everything that happens, everybody knows mm-hmm. because we really care so much. We also love to gossip. <laughs> so if something happened to one of my cousins, not even 30 minutes, I'm not even joking, not even 30 minutes, all the other aunts and cousins know because the Correct. worst press are like, oh my God, did you hear what happened to Pamela or did you hear what happened? So because we care so much, but also we want to know what's going on in your life to the point that sometimes for Americans might be a little bit like if they're like oh like I'm independent like nobody tells me what to do there's no <laughs> such thing that nobody tells me what to do my parents right now live with me and I swear to god I feel like I'm still in high school because they, they don't care that that's my house I'm in my own house right they don't care they're like well you're going to listen to what I have to say and you're go- I'm going to tell you this way you're going to do it that way because yeah. that's how they were brought up so right. A lot of Albanians, I feel, when they come to another country, they really feel a bit like, like liberated because right. they're like, I can be and do whatever I want. Right. So maybe that's why we come up a little bit 
crazy <laughs> because yep. like they really were liberated they're like oh like i don't have my family yeah. now to like constrict me of doing something be somebody but still they have that family issue like a lot of people think like oh you came to us you had maybe you got the american dream maybe you got a great job or you had a successful business like congrats you achieved it what people don't realize is that immigrants when they come here even if they are developing and they have a great life and they have a lot of money they still have people back home that they have to help right and usually in american culture that doesn't happen like if kids are out of yeah. college bye bye nobody really cares, cares what yeah. you're doing but we still care we still try to help our family or friends or if somebody's you know in a certain struggle or health wise we'll help you money wise and that's why they're always so stressed that's why we always have the middle line because they're always angry and stressed because it's not just us yeah. it's the entire community that we're supporting and we're helping and this is something that people sometimes don't realize right. they feel that maybe we're like too direct or we're too in people's business because we care yeah and we want to be and also we love gossip but <laughs> we want to be in the business because we really yeah. care and how can i help you if i don't know what's going on in your life right and i think this is something so special about the being culture that there's a reason why most of my closest friends are either Albanians, Greek, or some type of European or Balkan, because right. we get it. We are so like oriented, like we don't have that barrier. We right. get into the details and like the really greedy things. So I know what's going on with my friend. Whereas like with just a, an American that has been here for, they're very different. So they don't yeah. like we can be best friends, but we cannot be really really good friends because they always have that barrier to not get personal, mm -hmm. to not like um, be I guess like honest with themselves and just share what actually is going on in their right. life because nobody wants to be vulnerable right right we love to be vulnerable always love drama so if you're having a struggle uh -huh. well, i'll be there with you i'll listen i'll call again because it's not just like oh we like to gossip but like i i need to be there because mm. it's almost like we live off drama we've been literally years and years like countries have invaded us <laughs> for yeah. generations that now like it's like we're we're albanians we have to stick to one another so Absolutely. that's why when you know some albanians guess what you'll know all the other albanians in massachusetts and yes. vice versa <laughs> it's so true it's so true but the biggest thing is like we're very much like a um what do they call it there's individualistic culture and then there's more of like a family oriented yeah. type of culture and it's like that's where we were because if you look at all of our invasions and all the things albanians had to stick together yeah. in order to survive right without your mom opening those doors to those refugees they wouldn't have survived right true. and and, and it's like and also when i came here to the united states my parents won the visa lottery my brother was a newborn i was five years old and we had an albanian family that i opened their doors that had a two-bedroom house and there was already four of them there yeah and they opened the doors so what i like to say is albanians always open the doors for everybody and that's such a beautiful thing like you said you know to be in this kind of family type of the sticking for one yeah. another in a way. Yeah. And I feel like the beautiful thing is um, there's like a lot of Albanians that feel like that um, maybe certain ways of our culture, they see the negative side. They're like, well, there's always interest. Like nobody just opens the doors. Um, but, you know, like it's not, it's not that we can generalize or stereotype an entire community. Right. The people that didn't open the doors are just people that just don't care. They're selfish. It's right. not that they're Albanians don't care. Yeah. But there's so many people that I know, um, and I'm talking about like different, you know, New York or Massachusetts, that literally they open doors and live strangers, live in their like home for months until they can, you know, Be on their find feet. a job. Because people don't realize when somebody comes here, it takes like a couple months just for you to get papers. You cannot even open a bank account. You cannot get a driver license. So how are you even supposed to find a job without a green card? Because it takes two months for the papers. Right. So you need uh, a family to support you for like a month or two just so you can at least find a job. And what if the people that don't even know the, ang the language? Like that is, is a different struggle. Yeah. Or if you have family, like I'm blessed that when I came here, I didn't have kids. So it was just me and my husband. But I see so many families struggling just because they came here and they don't even have time to develop themselves or really like get experience because right. they're like struggling day by day, like living check by check. And that's where... I guess like me and you come in the entrepreneurship that I'm like, you can do it. It just, you have to like set your day or your week in a way. They're like, okay, I'm working this to give me income. And then this is the time that I have that I'm going to like develop myself. I'm learning something new. I'm learning a skill. Yeah. I'm volunteering. I'm opening a blog, whatever it might be, but you cannot right. give up 
just because you think like, oh, life sucks. Right. Because there's so many like successful entrepreneurs that we know that their life sucks. And they start from somewhere. And then you just keep going and just never, never stop meeting people that you think you can learn from them. They'll be there when you need them the most. And just like our good friends, be there for them because then doors start opening. But when you're like, just like in a way independent and you never have a community, you don't have a support and you think like nobody will help you. So you never ask anybody for help. You're not going to have, you're going to have a lot of closed doors. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, never stop asking questions, asking for help because you'll be surprised who can help you.